So good afternoon, everybody. Uh, you're all very welcome to this uh, exam prep and your wellbeing session, um, jointly hosted by the education team and the Thrive Wellbeing Hub. So um, thank you for taking the time during your lunch break to join us today. But I think it you'll find it will be worth your while. Um, we're very keen for everyone attending today to have some really key uh, takeaway uh, practical tools and all the rest of it to help you navigate the next few months as you enter into that kind of exam prep um, and examination season. So um, we have a jam packed uh, schedule today and some super speakers to provide you with lots of solid advice and, and help. So um, kicking off, I'll hand you over shortly to Leo Norris, who is head of our learning experience here at the Institute. And then followed by Cyril Conway, who is a, a, a chartered accountant and now a professional therapist. And then uh, finally, we'll have Adele Walsh. And <clears throat> Adele is also a chartered accountant, uh, also a student and exam coach. And she is also a lecturer and an examiner. So many of you will recognize um, some of the faces here today. Uh, and also, I'll hand over to Kaylin McGonagall from CASI shortly, um, who's going to run through some of the activities that CASI are getting up to this year. So you might be interested in those as well. So just before I hand over to everybody, um, I'd like to just kind of uh, really signpost some of the services that we have here um, with the Thrive Wellbeing Hub. Um, so how we kind of imagine uh, your sort of journey through the Institute, um, you're obviously up there at the top with um, your student, um, the three years that you study, um, depending on what you're doing, a flexible students, of course, as well. Um, your three years with the with the Institute before you go into your, um, your qualification and into your kind of full-time career, if you like. So obviously we see those kind of associated uh, challenges along the way, um, particularly for yourselves, exam stress, that work-life balance, how you kind of get the best out of your working day and your personal life, of course. Um, and then we kind of follow through. So really the kind of key message here for you guys is that we're with you every step of the way as you kind of go through this journey. Um, so these are some of the sort of the key services that we provide with the, um, the Wellbeing Hub. Um, a confidential listening service, which is obviously separate to the education team, separate to the institute as well. So very much a safe space. Um, sometimes if the, if the issue is kind of tricky and difficult, um, we call in the professionals and you would um, be able to avail of uh, eight sessions with a professional counsellor as well. And this is all uh, free as well. So um, very, very easy to access. And then you can come back into the Institute to the Thrive Wellbeing Hub to access some of the, um, the wellbeing coaching and um, some of the, the webinars that we would put on um, throughout the years. So um, we also have a dedicated team of four people um, in the Thrive Wellbeing Hub. These are just some of the kind of faces that you might see at our tailored webinars um, and then some of the kind of channels that you might see some of the content that we put out as well. So we have a YouTube channel with lots of kind of previous kind of a library of, of um, speakers there. You'll also see some of the information on our dedicated website and social media channels, of course, so on LinkedIn and uh, Instagram and some of those other kind of social media channels that you can access some of this information. Again, the bottom line, the Accountancy Ireland and Briefly would be other key channels that we would um, put content out. So look, don't be strangers. You know, I think the key message here that you probably hear from some of the speakers too is in, engage early if you're if you are struggling, if you're having some difficulties. Um, we are here to help you. So um, I think it's really important that you know um, those are the details you can obviously access these services through. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Kaylin, um, and hopefully you'll get plenty out of the session. You'll see me at the end. Um, we'll come back for some Q and A, and hopefully you'll get a chance to engage with some of the speakers. So um, enjoy the session. Thanks very much. Lovely, thank you. So thanks, Steve, for the introduction there. Um, as you mentioned, I'm Caitlin and I'm the Public Relations Officer for CASI for 2023. So I'll just run through a few bits about CASI and our upcoming events. So CASI are the Chartered Accountant Student Society of Ireland and we represent students across all 32 counties. We organise social, wellness, educational and professional events such as CASI Weekend Away and CASI Educational Reports. We provide a communication link between students and the Institute throughout their three years of training. This year, we are delighted to partner with Barden, our corporate sponsor for the fourth year in a row. Um, Barden provides brilliant services to students coming out of contract, but also along their whole journey. They also provide free one-to-one -one, um, sessions with any CASI student, so that is um, a brilliant asset to avail of over the course of your training contract. We also do a webinar series in conjunction with Barden. 
We've had a couple already this year covering uh, CVs and salaries and moving abroad. There's plenty more to come. And you can keep an eye on all them through our socials. Our charity sponsor for the year is Down Centre Marland. And they're a brilliant charity who enable children and adults with Down syndrome across the country. We took part in lots of socks on World Down Syndrome Day this year, and you can see evidence of it on our TikTok. So alongside Cass Eye, we have the regional societies, which include Cass Dublin, Cass Ulster, Cass Galway, Cass Northwest, Cass Midlands, Cass Limerick, and Cass Cork. Um, and all of these societies have returned to in-person events post-COVID. So not to dwell too much on the um, events that have already taken place this year, but some of them include the Cast Midlands Coffee Morning, Cast Cork organised an FAE Careers Evening in partnership with Barden, Cast Ulster organised Jukebox Jam or Bingo Loco earlier this year, Cast E Ball took place, Cast Northwest organised a walk and brunch, Cast Galway organised a quiz, and there's obviously many more events to come this year. Some of the upcoming events are, is the Cass Eye Weekend Away, always a popular one that will take place in October this year, and more details are to be announced very shortly. The Cass Tea Barbecue takes place this evening. Cass C are organising a bottomless brunch for this Saturday. The Cass L are organising their first post-COVID in-person event that will take place at the beginning of May. And the Cass U Ball tickets went on sale just a couple of days ago, and I believe there's still some available. So. That would be um, a brilliant one to attend if you're in the area. Um, all of these events take a lot of organisation um, from both committees, the regional committees and CASI. Um, but we obviously need uh, students in attendance. It's a great way to meet colleagues, to meet other students, to meet um, people that are on their training contract. So definitely avail of them if you're in the area or if you're interested in any of those. You can keep up to date with any of our upcoming events through any of our social media channels, mainly Instagram. Um, that's where everything is going to be posted, where you can find out about tickets, but also where you can get in touch with us. So you can get in touch with us through any of our social media links. You can drop us an email. If it's anything education related, anything got to do with exams, get to get in contact with Barden um, or any of the upcoming events. Another thing that's quite important is in November, um, the election for regional societies will take place and if you want to become interested in that, if you want any information, you can just drop me um, a message on any of our social media platforms. So that's all for me and please get in touch if you have any queries or, as I said, just catch us on any of the socials. Kaylin, thanks very much for that. Um, great update from CASI to um, all the students on here. If you haven't got involved with CASI uh, helping out or attending events, I'd really, really encourage that. Uh, it's a great way to get to meet people um, going through, I suppose, a similar challenges and journey as yourself. So my name is Leon Aris. I'm Head of Learning Experience at Charles Accountants Ireland. And I suppose previous to here, I was a lecturer in UCD in Smurfit. And I also lectured across all the accountancy bodies as well. So I'm hoping today, for those who haven't met me before, to give you an insight into well, what's it all about, exam and achieving success in the exam. And anyone that's heard me speak before knows my probably my favorite word is the word exam. And the reason I say it at the start is every time I say it there, if I'm giving you that uncomfortable feeling in your stomach, I'm saying it on purpose. And I, I, I'm a person who likes to hike and go up mountains. And there's a, a thing we say in mountain climbing, it's much easier to be on a mountain than to be looking at it. So if you're still looking at the exam as opposed to being on that exam journey and in that mind frame, I'd really encourage you to get into that place now and today, right? And that anxiety that comes with kind of Thinking about it, procrastinating is a lot worse than when you actually just take the bull by the horns. So I would really encourage you to do that. So with that in mind, let me just try out a few dates, which I hope are very much in your mind. So let's say I know we have a mixture of CAP 1, CAP 2 and FAE students on here today. So CAP 1, you've got some key dates coming up. So if you're CAP 1 there, your mocks, you've got 15th to the 23rd of April is your window. So that means this weekend, for those who are doing four subjects, I hope you're planning to do 
two mocks this weekend or maybe one this weekend and another one or two during the week and then a following one the following weekend. And then of course you've got your exams coming up the 22nd to the 26th of May. So that's about a month and a week away. So there you go, I'm making you feel nice and uncomfortable, but I'm doing it on purpose to get us into that exam mode for your CAP 2. You've got there your mocks coming up. What have I got there? The 6th to the 14th of May and your exams on the 26th and the 30th of June, and then the FE at the start of July and the middle of August for your exams. Okay, so let's have a bit of a think about that. That's our exam dates, and it's all about getting us ready for success in our exam. Are these challenging? Yes, they are. Are they doable? Are they achievable? 100%. For those who've heard me talk before at face-to-face -face events, I've talked a lot about the power of making a decision. That means making that decision that I'm getting this exam no matter what. And that's not a flippant thing to say, that's a very powerful reaffirming thing to say to yourself, because then you get yourself in the mind frame of doing all the things you need to do to achieve success in your exam. So what do you need to do to achieve success in your exam? Well, the first thing is, if you haven't done it already, what is your plan? So a goal without a plan is just a wish, isn't that it? So what is your plan? So for those CAP 1 students, we know what our plan is over the next week, it's doing those mock paper, mock, mock exams. And what I want to say to all of you is, you've got four attempts on the practice papers. So you wanna make sure you take on at least one of those attempts on the practice papers before you do the mock exam. So let's talk a little bit about the mock exam. What is that all about? It's your chance to put yourself under that exam pressure, that uncomfortable feeling, and test yourself on some level of content, but also on exam technique, on the platform, how you adapt to pressure, how you adapt to opening the paper and going, oh no, I don't know anything on this, what will I do, panic. No, you take a deep breath and say, I do know stuff here, let's find a question I know and take it on. So I cannot encourage you enough but to take on the mocks. A lot of students, I know they say, well, I haven't covered enough, it's a bit of a waste of time, you will gain so much learning out of mock exams. In fact, it's probably the number one key to success doing the mock exams. So I can't encourage enough to those CAP 1, CAP 2 and FE students, but to take those on. With that, your practice papers, make sure you use all of those so you get used to using the Cirrus platform. And whenever you're studying, make sure even if it's not using the platform, you're doing the same way you would in an exam. So if it's CAP 1, you've got no books there with you. CAP 2, you've got no solution. FE, you don't have a solution in front of you and take it on like you would an exam, under exam pressure with the clock on and taking it on on Word like you would mimicking Cirrus. So let's talk a little bit more about that plan. So what's in your plan is, when are you gonna study? When are you gonna have downtime? And it's very important to have both of those things in there. Also, what's your work? What's your commitments? Have that in there. <clears throat> Time is probably your most important resource for all you. And I'm sure you know that. So make sure you use your time really, really well. If you're studying and you're doing anything that is not going to score you marks in the exam, stop doing it. So usually reading is actually a hobby. It's not really studying. So what do I mean by that? Well, of course, you have to read to study, but it's active reading. It's a pen in your hand taking notes, doing exam questions, all that. So make sure always your study is active and it's scoring your marks in the exam. Likewise, in the exam, if you're writing or doing numbers and it's not scoring your marks, stop doing that, or should I say typing? Stop, just stop straight away. Am I scoring a mark? If you're not, go do another piece. Stop, move on to the next question, whatever that is. Okay, so just on your plan there, what we want to have make sure very clear between now and your exam dates, when are you gonna cover the different areas that you have to cover? And I suppose I'd encourage you all, rather than looking to being an expert in maybe each module in a subject, make sure to have a good grounded knowledge of it so you can pick up your marks and move on. What's the magic number in your exam? It's 50%. 50%, that's what you're looking for. So if you're doing four subjects in CAP 1 and you get 75 and 75 and a 60% and then you fail the other, well, what does that get you? So aiming to get that broad knowledge across all the modules and across all of the subjects. So let's think about how we study. So I talked about making sure whenever you're studying, you're thinking about scoring marks in the exam and where possible, mimicking the exam environment. So for most students, the biggest enemy actually is their solution. It's the solution. It is so easy for us when we study and do an exam question to go, let's have a look at what the solution is doing before we've maxed out the time that you would in the, in the exam. 
So make sure you max out your time, because once you go to, to, to look at the solution, your learning curve actually starts dropping. When you're taking on a question without that solution, your learning curve is maxing out. And mistakes are great. That's how we learn. That's how we learn. So, you know, whenever you're saying to yourself, I'm not quite ready to take on a question yet, I'm not quite ready to take on an exam question yet, that's when you take it on. Put yourself into that un uncomfortable place. Because once you start challenging the brain, it starts looking and finding what it, are the answers are, even when maybe you don't know what they are, because then when you go to look at them, the brain's waiting. Oh yeah, that's what I was looking for. That's the information I needed. So cannot encourage that enough. I suppose I just want to talk to you then as well about you know using that time very carefully, but also that idea of rewards and looking after yourself. I, I'd probably say if, if I was doing my CAP 1 or my CAP 2 or FE exams, I'd have three things going on in my world at the moment. And if I'm not meeting one of those three things, I shouldn't be doing it. So one is you've got your work or your commitments. So your work um, in your different jobs, and then your commitments will maybe in your relationship or if you've got children or whatever. So how do you best manage this at the moment? Well, make sure you communicate. So with your work, if they're not aware or clearly aware of the, the study you have to do and all that, make sure you've told your boss and all the pieces that go with that. Likewise, if you've got family, this is what's going on at the moment. This is my plan. This is how I'm going to achieve success. So that's number one, your work. Then the other two are your study and your balance. So if you're not doing one of those three things, I'd move away from those things. For the next, just for a cap one, it's your next month. Cap two, it's your next two months, and FE, so on. If you're not doing one of those three things, I just put it aside for now, because they're the things that are gonna give you success. Your work or commitment, you have to do that. Your study, going in with your plan, working on your content and your exam technique. And then the last piece there, that balance piece. And what am I talking about that? I remember when I went to do my first set of professional exams, I was under a lot of pressure and I thought, well, I don't have time to do my walking up the mountains or my going to the gym or swimming or playing music. And I realized actually very quickly, wow, this is when I need those things more than ever. So you really do know, need those things. Maybe you can't spend quite as much time as you would like, but they're very important when you've got these challenges going on. And you know what? I'm a big fan of subconscious learning. When you are going off for a swim or to the gym or even watching something on Netflix, the back of your mind there is working out those questions that you did early on, earlier in the day. So look, they're kind of the main things I want to talk to you about. Uh, I'm going to be hanging around for the next rest of the webinar. So if you've got any questions, I'd be really happy to hear from you on them. But I would really encourage you, you know, to remind yourself of those three things. Over the next month or a couple of months, if it's not work, if it's not study, or that balance piece, just put it aside for now. You know, look after yourself. You've set yourself this challenge that you want to achieve. It's very doable, very doable, but you need to set out your plan and go at it and stick to it. And remember all the supports you have, whether it's your family, your friends, Thrive here, all the supports that we've heard about there, CASI, and also us at the education team. Okay, I'm gonna hand you over now to Cyril Conroy. Cyril is a qualified chartered accountant, and he's also a professional therapist and a relationship mentor. And what's interesting is, uh, I believe Cyril, you know, started out on that route uh, in psychology, then went into chartered accountancy and has moved back into it again. So he's got a fountain of knowledge for you to, to share what you hear today. And Cyril, I'm gonna hand over to you. And thanks everyone for tuning in. Hi everyone. Um... Thank you, uh, Leo, for that introduction. Um, I'll just expand on that a little. Um, my name is Sir Conroy. I'm a chartered accountant, and I worked in private practice and worked in business for Flexco, which is a financial services company in Killorden, County Kerry, for 15 years. I originally did a BA in psychology, and I suppose I always really wanted to return to that. So now I have my own one-on-one -on -one practice in Killarney. I have first-hand experience of these exams and I know how hard they are. So I hope that the talk I give today will combine that first-hand knowledge along with the psychological side of these things. And I suppose the feelings that come up for us around exams may be trying to understand some of those feelings.
So my hopes for today, I suppose I want to explore some of the following themes. Taking care of me and this being a priority, a must. Knowing ourselves and how this can help us, how we perform in these exams and how our own sense of worth can be included in this. Pressure that we feel around exam time and where this might be coming from. Knowing above all that we are good enough. So looking after myself and my needs, I suppose you can only give to something what you've got yourself. You know, you can only give to exams what you've got yourself. I believe that we all have our own answers inside of us. Answers to questions like, what's happening for us? Why can't I study? Why do I procrastinate? Why am I feeling panic, anxiety, etc.? When I am looking after myself and my own needs, I am in more of a place to do all of the things I need to do, like exams, like work, like family, etc. Looking after myself and my needs is self-care. So why don't we do this? I'm too busy to take care of myself. I'm too busy looking after the needs of others, the needs that they might have of me. Sure, I don't need that. I get my joy from what others think of me. I'm not important enough or worthy enough to care for myself. Other people matter more than I do. Not taking care of myself is something maybe that I've always done. And most of all, and in what an awful lot of us feel, I think, is that taking care of myself is selfish. I fundamentally believe that this is not selfish, as when we don't take care of ourselves and put ourselves as a priority, it comes out in different ways. Moods, snappiness, irritation, frustration. I know that this happens for me when I feel overwhelmed by things. So, ironically, when I recognize it, take a step back, care for myself, it helps everyone, not just me. So who am I and what's going on for me? Very often we look to others to find the answer to this question. We look outside of ourselves. We see ourselves through the eyes of others and we value ourselves according to their measurements of us. I have thoughts, but I am not my thoughts. I can exhibit a behavior, but I am not my behavior. I do exams, but I am not the result of these exams. We can sometimes feel that we are the things here. As we associate ourselves with certain things we do or, or say, can we know ourselves so as to know that we are not these things? Confusing ourselves with these exams. You are not these exams and these exams are not you. We can become so confused in this, put so much pressure on ourselves. This can be for varying reasons, like not wanting to let people down, what people will think of me, parental pressure, peer pressure, employer pressure, pressure to prove that we are good enough. So many reasons which will all be unique to each of us and will make sense in relation to our own unique stories. If we can be kind to ourselves, understand ourselves a little, this will take so much pressure off us, allow the study and learning to flow. When we have, whether consciously or unconsciously, pressure on ourselves that is overt, too much, this can take so much out of us and really drain us. Don't get me wrong, some pressure is good, gets us going. But I feel, really feel that it needs to be the right type, a wanting to succeed for ourselves. This is so very different. But when it starts to overwhelm, this has a counterproductive nature to it and can, in fact, stop us from doing the best that we can. So knowing this, 
is a practical tip and is so healthy for us going into these exams, I feel. Some questions for ourselves. To what degree do I feel a need to be perfect? To what degree am I able to talk to myself kindly when faced with difficult emotions or circumstances? To what degree do I criticize or blame myself? Do I compare myself to others? How do we feel about ourselves? Very important to remember there is no blame, judgment, or criticism. This is always about understanding, looking within to figure out what's going on for me. This is about noticing daily our feelings towards ourselves and within ourselves. What you are feeling is always valid and important. With every act of self-care, your authentic self gets stronger and the critical, fearful mind gets weaker. Every act of self-care is a powerful declaration that I am on my side. Each day, I am more and more on my side. Now, for anyone tuning in that was in UCC a few weeks ago, um, apologies for the next few sides, but I actually did feel it was important to include them again in this presentation. Procrastination, and I know Leo mentioned it there, it can be such a, a, you know, something that really holds us back when we get to this time where we have to do. For me, logic is a great defense of mine and is often the cause of my procrastination. So for me, because I like to tick boxes, get my tasks done, when I am presented with something with huge volume, like these exams are, it actually causes me to stop because I can't complete, can't get done. I'm not getting satisfaction in getting these things done. I am not having that perceived control. No win at the end of a day or an hour. My patience is gone before I even start. I can feel like a bottomless pit or a black hole. When things can become overwhelming, if I see things as being insurmountable, I will procrastinate, put off and off. Of course, that then builds up in many other ways, like for me, stress and anger. But now that I know what's happening for me, now that I understand this about myself, it makes it easier to spot, to make a choice to do this differently. Perfectionism, do I need things to be perfect? Again, you might think when you are a perfectionist that you pour yourself in and get everything done. And yes, of course, this can be the case, but it can, like the above, lead to being overwhelmed because it's just not possible to complete everything to that standard that we've created for ourselves. Organization. Why can't we organize our time? Are we protecting ourselves from something unknown to ourselves? Procrastination and putting off the doubt about ourselves. Are we uncomfortable and doubt our ability, ourselves? Putting it off pushes it away so we don't feel these uncomfortable feelings. Putting it off gives us an excuse that it was a lack of time, etc and how clever a thing this is for us to do, to try to minimize and push away those uncomfortable feelings. The amount of time that we spend thinking about the thing we are going to do always far outweighs the quality time we actually spend on something, where we actually learn something. Knowing what's going on for us and being kind to ourselves in it is so helpful. Me knowing my procrastination and the causes allows me to spot it and to choose a different way, to feel safer around what's happening for me. But it starts with understanding it and acknowledging that it's there, figuring out why it's there and had to be there for us. 
So this may be an obvious statement, but you will never know what's going to come up in an exam. You just can't. That's why it's an exam. So there will always be something in an exam that will show us that we didn't expect. We will miss something, even if we have trawled the books cover to cover. So again, does it come back to doing our best, knowing that we won't have got to everything, knowing that what we are writing is good enough? Mainly, this is about, I feel, trying not to panic. There will be a question that we go, boom, that's awesome, know that, almost get excited. But there will also be a question that could lead to panic. When we panic or have a panic attack, it's trying to tell us something we already know. What I mean by this is that it's something in our unconscious, a memory, a feeling, or perhaps it is a need, a need to be liked, a need to be seen for what we do. Suddenly a bad examining question, then we can feel that real suffocating horrid discomfort. We might be feeling this feeling, but it comes, I feel, from underneath the surface. And of course, in an exam, you can't be looking at that in that present moment. So breathing into it, calming ourselves, trying to remember again that this exam is not us and we are not the result. So when it comes to recognizing stress, it's like most people think that, you know, they know what stress is, but actually, we can be under a, a, an, an immense amount of stress and pressure and actually not know. So how do I know when I'm stressed? And it will look different for everyone. And will you be able to spot it? So physically, how do I feel it in my body? I personally feel it across my shoulders and through my eyes, stress to the eyes, as they say down here in Kerry. Emotions, what emotions do I feel? Anger comes out for me. Behavioral, I pace up and down, snappiness with others. And thoughts, I kind of question whether I'm good enough. So this is about creating an early warning system for yourself so that you recognize when you are stressed and then can do something to alleviate that stress. One of these is breathing. Practice this three times a day. Even if you're not feeling that stress, it just brings you back. Focus on your breath right here and now. Breathe in deeply, then extend the out breath and simply watch your breath calm your body. Notice the colors and shapes around you. List to your mind three objects you can see, three things you can hear, three things you can feel. Watch any thoughts float in and out of your consciousness. Proper self-compassion involves showing ourselves the same levels of kindness, love, and understanding that we would display towards a friend going through hard times. When we are compassionate towards ourselves, we experience much greater degrees of happiness and well-being. So finally, I think these are some good tools to bring into an exam. Knowing I'm good enough to do these exams, knowing that it is just an exam and it's not me, recognizing the feelings, thoughts that are coming up for me, and above all, just doing my best and knowing that this is always, always enough. Five has some wonderful programs as outlined there at the start. Um, but if you'd like to contact me about anything that has come up for you today, I'd be delighted to answer your question. And um, thank you for listening and take care. Bye. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much, uh, Cyril. So my name is Idel Walsh, and I'm just going to bring you through the last part of our webinar today. 
So um, as Dee mentioned at the beginning, I am a chartered accountant also, and I'm also a chartered tax advisor. I spent much of my career after, I suppose, becoming a chartered accountant lecturing. So I spent a lot of my career in education. So as lecturer, I've been an examiner, um, and again, I lectured with all the main accountancy bodies. But more recently, I've actually set up my own business, and I am now a mental health and wellbeing coach and a student and exam coach. So I'm absolutely delighted, as I said, to be here with you guys today. If anything comes up from you, again, um, we can um, check it out in the chat at the end of today's webinar. But also, my details are on screen there. So if you do want to contact me, um, if anything has come up for you, please do feel free to do so. I'd only be delighted to hear from you. So what I'm going to talk about for the next 15 minutes or so is we're going to look at mindset, okay, and how we get into the right mindset for our exams. And we're also going to look at getting into the right mental state for our exams. So again, it'll follow on really nicely from what um, Sarah was saying and actually from some of the points that Leo was saying also in his, in his earlier presentation. So how do we get into the right mindset and, and what actually is mindset? So my, a mindset is I suppose, the way a person thinks or the opinions that they have. And I really wanted to start with this uh, quote today. I think it's, it's super. So whether you think you can, or you think you can't, you're right. So if you're telling yourself, I can't do this, this is really hard, this topic, this subject is really difficult, I can't do this. Our brains are really sophisticated organs, as we know, but they can't decipher between perception and reality. So if you're telling your brain you can't do something, it kind of has no option only to believe you. But the opposite is also true. So if you are telling your brain, I can do this, I've got this, it will also believe you. So it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So always think of that, okay? Whether you think you can or you think you can't, you are right. And there's two types of mindsets. So we've got the fixed mindset and we've got the uh, growth mindset, okay? So with the fixed mindset, okay, it's a belief that our intelligence and our, and our talents and our abilities are set in stone. Whereas really what we want is to be in that growth mindset, okay? And it's important to remember that, you know, again, for some facets of your life, you might be, have a fixed mindset and for other facets, you might be in the growth mindset. But for our exams, we want to delve into that growth mindset. And this is the belief that you have about yourself. You can develop your talents, achieve your goals, and, and, and you'll do all this through hard work, effective strategies, and of course, help from others. So through the next few weeks, how do, I, how do you go about developing that growth mindset for your exams? As Leo said, and, and again, it really resonated with me when he was talking, he said, you know, if you're doing something and it's not working for you, try something else. So if you find that you are not making progress with your studies, try something new. And it can feel a little bit, you know, it can feel hard trying new strategies. But again, just ask yourself, always reflect back and saying, is this working for me? And if the answer is new, try a new study strategy. Get feedback. Get feedback on how you are doing. So again, Leo said, we're talking about the mock exams. This is a really good example of trying to get some feedback. OK, so through the mock exams, you are going to get some feedback on how you are doing. OK, what's working well for you? What topics do you know? OK, and what's working poorly for you or, you know, what you need to spend a little bit more time on. So the best way of getting feedback is through doing the mock exams, through practicing past exam questions in your own time. That's the best form of feedback you can get because it tells you where you stand. Ask for help, okay? If it's, you know, if, again, if it's in, with your mental health or if it with, is within your study, if you're, if you're caught on something, there are so many people out there that want to help you. Be that, you know, your work colleagues. Again, there might be colleagues at work that have, you know, done these exams last year. Of course there are. Ask them and reach out for help, okay? You've got the education uh, team in charge of accountants. You've got Thrive, okay? You've got CASI. There's so many people that you can ask for help. 
And kind of following on to what Cyril was talking about there about, you know, being self-compassionate towards yourself. Praise yourself as you go along as well. OK, so if you're getting if you're making progress, if you're, you know, if you're figuring something out, say, God, well done. You know, I'm actually making progress here and this is really good. I just want to tap into a little bit about, I suppose, some of the, the talk that we can have to ourselves. And again, this also follows on from what Cyril says. I uh, was saying so again do you ever hear yourself saying I, I can't do this you know I'm not good enough I'm not smart enough I don't have time for this I just ask yourself you know are you concentrating on the negatives and ignoring any positives can you reframe your thoughts or can you look at this in any other way so what I'm going to do for you now is we're going to look at some thinking traps and how we convert them into positive prompts. So if you, and I've, I've used DBK here as an example, double entry bookkeeping, okay? So again, this can be, I suppose you can use this in any facet of your study, but this is what I've chosen. So do you ever hear yourself saying, you know, DBK or you know, double entry is just not one of my strengths? Can you correct that thought and say, DBK or double entry bookkeeping it's not one of my strengths yet. Because what does yet imply? Yet implies that you will get there. Even better, if I keep practicing double entry, I will grow and improve. Another trap, I just don't understand this. Can you change it to, I might not understand it yet, the favorite word yet, but my understanding will grow step by step. Even better, I keep practicing, I've got this. And then my last one here is, I'm just not smart enough. Change that to, I don't have the knowledge yet, and I love this part. The feeling that DEBK is hard is that feeling that my brain is growing. I love that, okay? So if something is hard, it feels like my brain is growing and expanding. Sometimes, another way of looking at this, sometimes effort alone isn't enough if I'm not making progress. I will change my study strategy. So if you're sitting in, the, in front of the books for hours on end and you feel like you're not making any progress, that needs to be a cue or a prompt for you to change your strategy, okay? And that is what the growth mindset encapsulates. Just some other positive prompts for you as you study. With practice, it will get easier. Everything is hard at the start, but the more you practice, it will get easier. Challenges make me better. I love that one. And mistakes are how I learn and get better. OK, I was speaking to a student um, just a few weeks ago and they were preparing for an exam. And of course, I was saying, well, you know, were you practicing past exam questions? And they said, no, you know, I, I like to leave that around a week before the study. And again, we I probed a little deeper. I was like, you know, why are you waiting for so long to start practicing past exam questions? And it turned out that the student was afraid. They were afraid of what the past exam questions would show them, of what they, they didn't know. But again, it was just a change in mindset and saying, well, isn't it better to know what mistakes you were going to make now as opposed to making them on the day of the exam? Because mistakes are how we learn, okay? You can only learn from mistakes. So I'm a great advocate and make all the mistakes you can now because that is how you are going to learn. During the exam, if you feel a little bit of panic coming upon you during the exam, some more positive self-talk. I'm just going to take one question at a time. I'm doing my best. I've done other exams. I can do this one. So that is mindset and getting into the, the, the positive, I suppose, that growth mindset and changing those thinking traps into positive prompts. Next, I'm just going to touch on, you know, managing your mental state for study. And again, Leo talked at the, at the outset about planning. OK, I'm a great advocate in planning your study, because when you plan, you feel in control. I would caveat, though, in that in saying that, you know, don't have your plan too rigid. OK, make sure it's fluid because if you and make sure that you've got your plan so you can change your plan and you don't feel a little anxious about changing your plan 
plan your weeks and then plan your days. So planning helps you feel in control. In that plan, make sure you are planning for your breaks. So after 90 minutes of study, take a 10 minute break. And during that 10 minute break, okay, can you do something like go out for a nice walk, perhaps do a bit of meditation or practice the breath work that Cyril talked about? Play to your natural rhythm. Again, a lot of students come to me and say, Dad, can you give me a plan? And I can't because we're all different, okay? Every one of us studies in a different way. For some of us, the morning is good. For some of us, it's lunchtime. For some of us, it's late at night. You know when you work best, and if it's possible for you, try and play to that. Or when you're planning your weekend of study, or if you're planning to do a mock um, exam this weekend, and you know that you're good first thing in the morning, go for it then and try and do the mock exam then. Look at the distractions around the place. And there's, I, I don't think, um, I, I, I wouldn't be a genius to say that I think it's mobile phones are going to be the key distraction, okay? So again, can you put some friction into the system? You know, while you're studying, put the phone in airplane mode or do not disturb. For me, that's actually not enough because I'll just take it off. So for me, I have to get the phone physically out of the room, okay? Because every time a notification comes up, on your phone and you say, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna have a quick look at that. Okay. Every one of those distractions, it takes your brain three and a half times longer to get back into that flow of study when you were distracted. And if you are finding a task or a subject or a topic quite overwhelming, break it down. Break it down into small, manageable chunks. Work for 25 minutes on the topic take a break or even scale it back further ask yourself what is the one small step that i can take today to move myself forward okay next so what does an exam and a lion have in common okay so i suppose our brains they've evolved to you know respond to dangers in an, in our environment like a lion chasing us in the jungle and what does that happen? It makes us breathe faster, might make us a little bit dizzy, our palms might get sweaty, okay? So in other words, it's our body's way of preparing us for fight and flight. In our prehistoric brain, okay, an exam for some of us, not for all, for some of us looks like danger. So our body is going to respond in the exact same way, heart racing, sweaty palms, dizziness, etc. So it's okay to be nervous. And I, I would say, don't expect to eliminate nerves altogether, but the trick is how to cope with those nerves. So I'm just gonna bring you through a few techniques on how to cope with those nerves. It's all about trying to get into a relaxed state. So when we are stressed, you know, our body uses up a huge amount of energy and we get tired very quickly. But when we're in a more relaxed state, more blood flows to our brain, enabling us to think more clearly. So that's where we want to be. So I'm just going to share with you four techniques that I wish I had known when I was doing my exams many years ago now at this stage. So Cyril talked about breath work, so I won't go into that again. But again, there's some brilliant apps out there, you know, like Calm and Headspace. But again, you don't even need those apps to help you with breath work. If you go into YouTube, there are so many videos out there that help with breath work. And again, it's, I always say, it's, this is like, breath work is like a muscle, okay? So, you know, if you're training for a marathon, or if you're training for something, you need to go to the gym to build that up. It's the same for breath work, because in, if you get a little bit stressed or panicky in the exam, say, I'm just gonna start breathing, you know, it might be too late. Whereas if you incorporate 30 seconds, 90 seconds, two minutes of breath work into your routine every day, I can guarantee you it will show an amazing results. So one technique that I would use would be the three, four, five breath, breathe in for three, hold for four, out for five. That will take you less than seven seconds. Another thing that I would recommend is meditation. 
And research has shown us that meditation, it can change the structure and function of our brain through relaxation, okay? It helps us relax, it reduces stress, anxiety, depression. For our exams, it increases focus and concentration, and it improves our memory and our attention span. So again, there are some amazing free um, meditations out there. So if after this webinar, you Google exam anxiety at meditation, there's a brilliant one there that is, it's around 10 minutes long. And again, you can incorporate that into your daily routines. Another two things that I would just suggest is if you are having a bad day or if you're finding, you know, something really hard to, to grasp, just walk away for five minutes, okay? Just walk away from it, okay? Because if you keep looking at it, the stress can mount. So walk away from it and come back to it with a fresher mind. And lastly, I would say, focus on what's within your control. What's in your, there's things that are outside of your control, like what is going to come up in the exam, okay? But the things that are within your control is how you study, the way you study, and when you study. My last piece that I'll, I'll just touch on here is self-regulated -re learning, okay? And again, this is all within your control. So we've got our plan, we're gonna revise and evaluate. But to, another way of looking at this, so plan your days, use smart way study techniques. So a smart way study technique is, it's also called retrieval practice. Where, so examples would be, you want to be pulling information out of your brain. So for example, practicing past exam questions, doing your mock papers. If you've learned a topic, you can do a brain dump, okay? So again, they're all smart way um, study techniques. And finally, reflect. Reflect on what you've done that day. What's working well for you? What do you need to change? What do you need to learn more of for better mastery? Okay, so plan, revise and evaluate. Final part for me is don't be afraid to ask for help. Okay, so this is a quote from Barack Obama. I do it every day. Asking for help isn't a sign of weakness. It is a sign of strength. There are so many people out there that want to help you. So again, ask for the help. So guys, the very best of luck. Um, again, my details are up on screen there. Um, and it, please do feel free to reach out if um, you've got any questions. And again, we, we, we've got a few moments for uh, questions now also. So thank you so much. Dell and all of the speakers, look, thank you so much for a really whistle-stop tour, um, plenty of a fantastic advice and um, tricks and tips to take away from today. Um, look, we have had quite a few questions come in. Some of them have been answered. Um, so maybe if the presenters want to just pop on their, their cameras for a second and we can just um, run through a few of these. Um, so look, there was some feedback about the events that CASA might be holding a bit closer to um, exam time and, and study time and all the rest of it, but we'll certainly um, feed that back to CASA. And um, of course, if it works for you, you can attend. And if it doesn't, there'll be plenty of other ones after the exams, I'm sure. Um, so we have a few here. Somebody is asking, um, sorry, just my, pulling down the questions here now, sorry. So someone's asking um, a, oh, right, I'm not sure that was actually just in the moment. So somebody was asking, I'm wondering if the mock exam questions will be quite similar to the actual exams for CAP 1. Um, and we had a very good response there from um, somebody in education. So the mock papers um, students engage with on their, on, under exam conditions using the Cirrus platform, the mocks are on demand. So you can decide the time and the date that you sit within specific dates. Mocks are self-marked and students will go through the papers with their lecturers, um, recordings and the webinars um, after the mock window has closed. And this will be an element of the revision program. So um, a fairly kind of you know comprehensive answer to that question. Um, and then I just want to run down, I did see another one here. So around the kind of um, mock exams using a MacBook, do I need to kind of ensure that I have downloads or add-ons? And um, the answer is yes. There was a recent um, mail that was sent out to all students around the Guardian add-ons. So if there's any uh, assistance that you need regarding that, please just go back to student queries and they can make sure that you have the right um, add-ons for, for those mock exams. Um, and just, 
somebody is also asking um recommend so you recommend that you do one attempt to the exam platform before we do the mock exam so maybe one of the education team want to pop on and just answer that question sure do i can come in there thanks for you just on the question before there on the mocks just as well on the exam standards the actual exam the paper the questions that come up is very much exam standard it'll very much mimic a past exam paper in often cases they may have even taken past questions you know to, to read you get so very similar just can you clarify Dee, what's the question then in the exam platform that they're asking so somebody is asking so you recommend um to do one attempt in the exam platform before we do the mock exam sure yeah so basically you've got the practice paper and you've, you've a chance to use this four times so you have four attempts to go on to cirrus and mimic doing a full paper what i'm encouraging people is make sure you've taken on at least one of those attempts before you do the mock exam so you, you don't use the mock exam as oh just that chance to go and use cirrus you want to take it on like it's the real exam the real day so as you can use all the skills that Adele and Sarah were talking about when something comes up that you use that reading skill rather than panic and all that so it's before that make sure to do at least one at least one I, i'm not saying don't, don't only do one. just don't turn up to the mock not having at least done one of those practice papers on the serious platform great advice okay and then we just have time for maybe one more question can you help me understand how you want me to prepare the material that i can use as an open book so hopefully that makes sense to you theo yeah, sure, no problem. So CAP2 and FAE students, um, and, and, and I suppose that's a very careful balance. So in one way, I would study for myself for CAP2 and FAE like it's not open book, all right? So that means the mindset. Don't be expecting to turn up on the day of the exam and be able to find whatever answer you need out of a book, okay? The other piece, though, is so, but it is open book. How do I prepare for that? So your note taking is very important how you reference pieces, how you, um, you know, put, put labels on certain areas so you can find it on the day. Now, what there is there is we've actually got a suite of recordings across CAP1, CAP2 and FAE that will be re released in tandem with your exam prep sessions. And those videos specifically go, John Nolan does it for CAP1 and it's Mike Farrell for CAP2 and FAE, specifically showing you how to take notes in preparation for that open book exam. But I suppose I would just really encourage you, don't think, bring everything with you. You know, if you go on holidays and you have 56 kilos, you'll take 56 kilos. Go with the minimalist approach. And what I would say to your, you know, my head is, if this was a closed book exam, what's that, those pieces of information I'm trying to ram into my head? That's what you want to bring with you. So it's like what you call maybe your cheat sheet. It's not a cheat sheet, but that's what we call it. It's that final set of notes, that final piece of organization maybe that final perfect answer that came up before. That's great. Thanks, Leo. And look, just somebody is asking about the counselling uh, sessions uh, through Thrive, and I just want to answer that very quickly. So they're asking, what's the time frame for those eight counselling sessions with a professional? Um, the, the short answer is there is really no time frame. So it's a case by case basis um, and we'll sort you out. Just come along and chat to just send an email to Thrive and we'll get back to you and have a chat and walk you through the process there. But the support is there for you and there is no time frame. So don't be worrying about that. Um, please reach out for help. Reach out for support. You've had some fantastic um, advice and, um, and great guidelines there from Leo, from Cyril and from Adele. And thank you also to Kaylin for popping along and telling everybody about um, all the great activities going on with CASI and all of the other um, societies around the country. Thanks for taking the time during your lunch break today to be with us. Um, the more engaged you are, the better prepared you are, the better you will do. So please engage with the Institute all, the, all along the way and we're here to help you. So thanks everybody and we'll see you the next time. Take care. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.